I can recall sitting on my living room floor, eating some sort of wet food-like substance, and the light illuminating from the television filling the entirety of my field of vision. It was as if the rest of the world had been cut off from my psyche. Just for a moment, perhaps my parents were arguing in the background, but I never could have been sure. The yellow character trekking across the screen gave an obnoxious laugh and a smile I sought to emulate. A pink starfish showed me what a friendship was supposed to look like. None of these concepts I understood in words, but as children, we do learn by osmosis, by consuming so much pertaining to the topic that eventually we just understand it subconsciously. I was two years old this day, and the show I was watching was Spongebob. When I turned four, there was nothing I wanted to watch other than Spongebob. My mom would want me to watch Nick Jr. because she believed it had some kind of educational quality, or at the very least would be geared towards kids my age because being normal, eh? but I was left only to wait until the block ended corresponding with the bigger kids getting home from school. Nothing about what was airing in my age range interested me, and as I realized just how bored the content made me, I played a game in my head where I would see how long I could go watching the channel until inevitably the yellow guy showed up again for 6 hours a pop. I took so much control over the TV due to how long Spongebob was being aired that it would cause arguments within my family leading to resentment towards both the show and to me for liking it so much. Even my grandmother looked at me with immense confusion for not wanting to watch Sesame Street. My interest was deep and narrow. I showed no interest in anything else. At 12, after 10 years of actively watching The Sponge, it would be less of an active obsession and more so that it was always going to be in the background. It was something I looked over to laugh at quips while doing other things. It was an intrinsic part of the household, like the sofa, like the television, like the fridge. One of the very things that establishes a basic sense of atmosphere and culture was Spongebob. It permeated our way of life so heavily that it was treated as constant background noise as we carried on with our normal activities. What was it about Bikini Bottom that enticed that young boy so heavily? The amazing thing about Spongebob is that as you get older, you get different things out of it. When you were young, you were exhilarated by idyllic adventure. When you're old, you're intoxicated by wit and social commentary. When you grow up with Spongebob, it isn't just a black and white progression. You don't immediately understand the adult elements upon adulthood, and you don't immediately leave the childish ones behind either. Growing up with the show is a process of seeing more and more of the, for lack of a better word, advanced things it had to offer. It was exciting to eventually have the pieces filled in one by one as you and your understanding of the world grew, and as you begin discovering new things within the text you never noticed, the appeal never ends, it only changes alongside you. But more than that, Bikini Bottom represented what I wanted to be. While we certainly see monotonous adventures such as clocking into work every day not unlike our real world, the mere artifice of being underwater brings us far enough away from our reality while including elements of it that we can relate to. It allows us to escape while inserting ourselves into the setting. And for someone like me, inserting myself into a place without the troubles I was facing was appealing to me from the beginning. At eight years old, I was lying on my mother's bed, begging her to not let me age any further because I had viewed age as the cause of my problems, whereas the real problem I was facing was being able to focus into fantasy less and realizing what my reality was more. I didn't want to deal with death. I didn't want to know that my parents might have been getting divorced. I wanted to be in front of my TV screen, and that desire to connect to media in a way I used to only led me to becoming even more indulgent within it, to the point of wanting to live in that world. I cried on her lap with the sense in my entire body that nothing would be fixed. It was as if my emotions came out through my physical being, a boy shaking, a boy's heart racing. The next night my mind grew entirely occupied by the thought of living out life in another world. And the night after that, and the night after that, and the night after that, 
I carried on my day-to-day -day activities the best I could until eventually I dropped school entirely. I had only just learned to read at age 7 due to my disinterest in any of the books I had, so my education had already been on slow mode, but this is the age when I began cheating on my tests. I lost any motivation to keep working because as I worked, I couldn't stop being sad. During all of this, I had an escape. I had Spongebob. Even when everything else was out of the picture, I had Spongebob. Someone to grow up with, someone to laugh with, someone to see as... family. And then, at 10 years old, I reached a breaking point. I had continually slammed my head against the wall in my mom's house, and I had desperately hoped that that wall would lead to a concussion, would lead to death. I didn't really understand how it worked when I was 10, but I knew exactly where I wanted to end up. And when my parents had stopped me from slamming my head against that wall, the only thing that kept me from doing it again was the aspirations I had as an artist. I sat down and I would draw these incredibly convoluted comic books that were terrible looking in art style, but were extremely passionate in story. And I did this all the time for hours and hours and hours and hours a day because I wanted to replicate the same feeling that I got when I watched Spongebob, when I made my own comic book, eventually my own cartoon, as I thought I would. I wanted f for... I, I wanted the comic book to feel the same way it did for me with Spongebob to someone else. And... I wanted to create these worlds that were my own that I could feel the same way when I looked at those worlds as I did when I watched Spongebob. And without Spongebob, I wouldn't have made those comics, and without those comics, I wouldn't have had something so fun to do every day that kept me from thinking about the fact that I did want to slam my head against the wall. I did want to get a concussion. And without those two things, cartoons and my own creativity, I don't think I would have made it out of that period of my life.